Part 2 Chapter 4 Stewards of the Mysteries Apostolic Example For colon 1-21 Apostolic Function Example and Authority A steward is a manager of his master's wealth, for example Abraham's servant Eliezer and Joseph in Potiphar's house. Paul is not the source, he is the manager and messenger of God's hidden wisdom in person and in his letters. The mysteries Christ revealed to him concern his heaven-bound people. We need to know what the mysteries are, so we know what God is doing now. There is a list of mysteries given to Paul at the end of this chapter. Paul's epistles take us from being babes in Christ to be fully mature perfect men of God. Paul continues to correct the Corinthians' problem of ungodly thinking. The Corinthians were worldly, enamored with their spiritual gifts, and impressed with themselves, or puffed up. They were getting caught up with what the adversary was doing the course of this world. They needed to take their eyes off men and the wisdom of this world and onto Christ and his apostle. Paul sets about to change their minds about caring what the world thinks about them. Then he tells them how they should think about him and his ministry. People learn best by imitation. Paul is our role model, our template, our pattern. He wants us to follow his example as he follows Christ. The moment we are saved we receive the imputed righteousness of Christ, but then in order to grow, sanctification, we need to understand and practice the doctrine Christ gave us through Paul. The order of our edification curriculum is Romans to Philemon. Paul's doctrine will affect how we think, which will affect how we live, and then affect how we spend our time. One affects the other. Paul's goal was to move the Corinthians, and us, to think godly, so they could live godly, and then labor godly. For colon 1-3 Paul is the steward of the mysteries, but he graciously includes Apollos, a secondary apostle, as also being a steward of the mysteries because he is a worker in the faith given to Paul. We identified several secondary apostles to the body of Christ in our study of chapter 3. As we know, the twelve apostles are not in the body of Christ but have a different destiny, Matt. 1928 Paul and Apollos were messengers and managers of Christ's heavenly ministry, not his earthly ministry. For colon 4-6 Paul did not know this information by himself, it was revealed to him. He faithfully shared the revelation of the mysteries he received from Christ with us, Gal. 1 11, 12. Paul is not justified by the work he does for Christ. What matters is what Christ does through the believer. We cannot be reluctant about taking a stand for the word of God rightly divided. We cannot be influenced by the fashion of this world. Instead, we should welcome the sufferings of Christ. Paul's only concern was pleasing God, not men. God is his judge. Paul cares nothing about the judgment of men and does not even dare to judge himself. We are not to compare ourselves with one another. We serve Christ. Christ is our power source. At the judgment seat of Christ, God will reveal the secrets of men's hearts, our motives and intentions, Heb. 4.12 The rewards we receive will probably be our job assignments in the heavenly places. Paul mentions himself first because Christ made him our pattern, 1 Tim. 1.16 Paul and Apollos are only messengers it is Christ who is everything. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one who should be exalted. For colon 7 if Paul and Apollos were examples and a blessing to the Corinthians, they should be grateful to God and not men. All that we have comes from him, even the Corinthians' spiritual gifts, even our spiritual understanding. For colon 8, 9 Paul uses loving sarcasm. You Corinthians brag about one another as if you were kings on thrones. How wonderful it must be to reign like kings and look down on others. Still Paul says, I wish that you really were genuine kings, and I wish we could reign with you. Paul says God seems to have put us apostles last, as if appointed to death. I must be a despised apostle, a spectacle, gazing stock in an arena, Heb. 1033, 
or extraordinary exhibit to the world and to angels. Since the mystery of the formation of the body of Christ in the dispensation of the grace of God was not revealed in the Bible until Paul revealed it, curious angels are learning from Paul and us in the body of Christ. Angels observe us, so we should be careful to behave well. Ackel. 5 colon 6 f 310 man was made a little lower than the angels but because christ is in us we will be elevated above them psa 8 colon 5 heb 2 colon 7 dash 10 for colon 10 dash 13 paul was willing to be a fool for christ's sake and so should we paul and apollos blessed the corinthians while they reviled spoke against them for example, when Paul told the Jews that circumcision doesn't matter, he was not very popular with them, and they beat him. He suffered many things even while writing this letter. He and Apollos both worked to support themselves. The world cannot understand this kind of sacrifice and calls that person a fool. Paul could have been a great rabbi, but he gave it up to be a minister of Christ, philosophy. 3 colon 1 dash 11 Paul was a fool, they were wise. They said Paul was weak in person, but thought they were strong. They were honorable, Paul was despised, but they thought they were impressive using the world's wisdom. We should rely on God's word, not the world's wisdom. We must be willing to be despised, thought of as the scum of the earth. We should bless others while being reviled by them. For 14, 15. The Corinthians treated Paul less than what he deserved. Paul said he didn't write this letter to shame them but to warn them because they were his beloved sons. He reminded them that he had begotten them in Christ when he gave them the gospel and showed them from scripture who Jesus was and what he had done. After that, Paul patiently nursed them along for more than 18 months. Paul was their spiritual father, even if they had 10,000 instructors. There were too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Everyone thought they were a leader or teachers. Teachers need to have a solid understanding of the Word of God and the KJV rightly divided. For 16, 17 Paul implores them to follow him, 11 colon 1, Phil 3 17. Even now he was hoping that they would change their minds about who Paul was and follow him and his ways. Notice how Paul says in Christ, Paul constantly gives Christ the credit for anything good that he does. Paul sent Timothy to them because he fully understood Paul's distinctive ministry and apostleship. Paul sent this letter from Ephesus with him. There was division because they do not understand that they need to follow Paul. In 2 Corinthians, we find out that they did not respect Timothy, so Paul had to dispatch Titus. Timothy was timid but Titus spoke with confidence. Titus was finally able to give Paul a good report about how this letter had convicted them and changed their mind about Paul. They finally realized that Paul loved them enough to correct them and to point them back to the fact that he was their Christ's appointed apostle and most were behind him all the way. For colon 18-21, Paul mentions that phrase puffed up several times in this letter for colon 6-18, 5 colon 2, referring to the Corinthians' attitude of superiority and carnal pride. The leaven or yeast of sin had crept into the church and puffed them up, 5 colon 6. They were inflated with false spirituality. A carnal Christian often brags, but there is no demonstration of God's Spirit working through them, 2 to 4. They said his letters are stern, but in person he is weak, 2 cor. 10 10, therefore, Paul found it necessary to warn them saying fancy talk is cheap, but he is interested in their power. They were thinking that Paul would not come to them. But Paul did come to them, 2 Cor, 2 colon 1, 2 and 12 14. It must have grieved Paul to have to write a letter correcting the carnal Corinthians, but that is what they needed. Paul did it because he loved them. It was necessary for their own good. They needed to stop being divided and to realize that Christ had appointed him to be the apostle and was giving him revelation for the body of Christ. Did they want him to come with a spanking stick when he came or in love and in the spirit of meekness? Meekness is obeying what God says. 
For colon one, let a man so account of us, as of the ministers of Christ, and stewards of the mysteries of God. Paul is the steward of the mysteries, but graciously includes Apollos, a secondary apostle, as also being a steward of the mysteries because he is a worker in the faith given to Paul. We identified several secondary apostles to the body of Christ in our study of chapter 3. The twelve apostles are not in the body of Christ but have a different destiny, Matt. 1928 Paul and Apollos were ministers of Christ's heavenly, not his earthly ministry. There is a list of the mysteries reveled to Paul at the end of this chapter. Two moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. A steward is a manager of his master's wealth, for example Abraham's servant Eliezer and Joseph in Potiphar's house. Paul managed and relayed God's hidden wisdom in person and in his letters. The mysteries God revealed to him concern his heaven-bound people. 3. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yeah, I judge not mine own self. Paul will be judged by his own master according to his faithfulness. For for I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. Paul did not know this information by himself it was revealed to him. He faithfully shared the revelation of the mysteries he received from Christ with us, Gal. 111, 12. Paul is not justified by the work he does for Christ. What matters is what Christ does through the believer. We cannot be reluctant about taking a stand for the word of God rightly divided. We cannot be influenced by the fashion of this world. Because if we are, then our edification process is hampered. Instead, we should welcome the sufferings of Christ. Paul's only concern was pleasing God, not men. God is his judge. Paul cares nothing about the judgment of men and does not even dare to judge his own motives. We are not to compare ourselves with one another. We serve Christ. Christ is our power source. 5. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. At the judgment seat of Christ, God will reveal the secrets of men's hearts, our motives and intentions, Heb. For 12. The rewards we receive will probably be our job assignments in the heavenly places. Paul mentions himself first because Christ made him our pattern, 1 Tim, 1 16, to follow and imitate. Paul and Apollos are only messengers it is Christ who is everything. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one who should be exalted. 6 And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes. Paul uses himself and Apollos mere human messengers as our examples. Paul and Apollos are only messengers and examples, it is Christ who is everything, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. 7. For who mocketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory, as if thou hadst not received it? If Paul and Apollos were examples and a blessing to the Corinthians, they should be grateful to God and not men. All that we have comes from him, even their spiritual gifts, even our spiritual understanding. 8. Now ye are full, now ye are rich, ye have reigned as kings without us, and I would to God ye did reign, that we also might reign with you. Paul uses loving sarcasm. You Corinthians brag about one another as if you were kings on thrones. How wonderful it must be to reign like kings and look down on others. Still Paul says, I wish that you really were genuine kings, and I wish we could reign with you. 9. For I think that God hath set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. Paul says God seems to have put us apostles last, as if appointed to death. I must be a despised apostle, a spectacle, gazing stock in an arena, Heb. 1033, or extraordinary exhibit to the world and to angels.
Since the mystery of the formation of the body of Christ and the dispensation of the grace of God was not revealed in the Bible until Paul revealed it, curious angels are learning from Paul and us in the body of Christ. Angels observe us, so we should be careful to behave well. Ackle. 5 colon 6 f. 310 Man was made a little lower than the angels, but because Christ is in us, we will be elevated above them. Heb. 2 colon 7 10. 10 We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong, ye are honorable, but we are despised. 11 Even unto this present hour we both hunger, and thirst, and are naked, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place. 12 And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it. 13 Being defamed, we entreat, while being falsely accused and spoken badly of, we ask you anxiously to accept our message, we are made as the filth of the world, and are the offscouring of all things unto this day. Paul and Apollos blessed them while they reviled, spoke against them. We should be willing to be a fool for Christ's sake. For example, when he told the Jews that circumcision doesn't matter, he was not very popular with them, and they beat him. He suffered many things even while writing this letter. He and Apollos both worked to support themselves. The world cannot understand this kind of sacrifice and calls that person a fool. Paul could have been a great rabbi, but he gave it up to be a minister of Christ, philosophy. 3 colon 1 dash 11. Paul was a fool, they were wise. They said Paul was weak in person, but thought they were strong. They were honorable, Paul was despised, but they thought they were impressive using the world's wisdom. We should rely on God's word, not the world's wisdom. We must be willing to be despised, thought of as the scum of the earth. We should bless others while being reviled by them. 14. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons I warn you. The Corinthians treated Paul less than what he deserved. Paul said he didn't write this letter to shame them but to warn them because they were his beloved sons. He reminded them that he had begotten them in Christ when he gave them the gospel and showed them from scripture who Jesus was and what he had done. After that Paul patiently nursed them along for more than 18 months. Paul was their spiritual father, even if they had 10,000 instructors. 15 For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers, for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. There were too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Everyone thought they were a leader or teachers. Teachers need to have a solid understanding of the word of God rightly divided. 16 Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Paul implores them to follow him. 11 colon 1 Philosophy 317 dot 17 for this cause, division, because they do not understand that they need to follow Paul, have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son, and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Even now he was hoping that they would change their minds about who Paul was and follow him, and his ways, 1 Tim. 116. Notice how Paul says in Christ Paul constantly gives Christ the credit for anything good that he does. Paul sent Timothy to them because he fully understood Paul's distinctive ministry and apostleship. Paul sent this letter from Ephesus with him. In 2 Corinthians we find out that they did not respect Timothy, so Paul had to dispatch Titus. Timothy was timid, but Titus spoke with confidence. Titus was finally able to give Paul a good report about how this letter had convicted them and changed their minds about Paul. They finally realized that Paul loved them enough to correct them and to point them back to the fact that he was their Christ's appointed apostle, and most were behind him all the way. 18 Now some are puffed up, as though I would not come to you. Paul had to be firm. He mentions that phrase puffed up several times in this letter for colon 6, 18, 19, 5 colon 2, referring to the Corinthians' attitude of superiority and carnal pride. The leaven, or yeast, of sin had crept into the church and puffed them up, 5 colon 6. 
They were inflated with false spirituality and showmanship. A carnal Christian often brags, but there is no demonstration of God's Spirit working through them, 2-4. Therefore, Paul found it necessary to warn them saying fancy talk is cheap, but he is interested in their power. They said his letters are stern, but in person he is weak, 2 core. 10 10 dot 19 But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know, not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. They were thinking that Paul would not come to them. But Paul did come to them, 2 core. 2 colon 1, 2 and 12 14. 20 For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. 21 What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod, or in love, and in the spirit of meekness? It must have grieved Paul to have to write this letter correcting the carnal Corinthians, but that is what they needed. Paul did it because he loved them. It was necessary for their own good. They needed to stop being divided and to realize that Christ had appointed him to be the apostle and was giving him revelation for the body of Christ. Did they want him to come with a spanking stick of correction when he came, or in love, and in the spirit of meekness? Meekness is obeying what God says in his word. God's will, who will have all men to be saved, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth, 1 Tim. 2 colon 4, the mysteries revealed to Paul. In the Bible, a mystery is a divine secret not revealed by God until he decides to reveal it. God has now revealed it, Rom. 16.25.26 It is hidden wisdom of God, 1 Cor. 2 colon 7, where was it hidden? God hid this body of information in himself, which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, F. 3 colon 9. The ascended, glorified Lord Jesus Christ saved Saul of Tarsus and made him Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles, Rom. 11.13 Christ began a new dispensation with Paul as the first member of the body of Christ, 1 Timothy 1 verses 15 and 16. He gave him some new previously undisclosed information for the church and a distinctive apostleship. Christ revealed several mysteries to us through Paul, making him a steward of the mysteries of God, 1 Cor. 4 colon 1. 1. We live in a giant parenthesis. The parenthesis is bookend by Christ's two appearings. First to Paul on the road to Damascus and then at the rapture, Titus 2 verses 11 and 13 f. 3 colon 1-9, 1, 1 core. 917. The dispensation of grace, a mystery, has been inserted and the nation of Israel has been put on hold because God has postponed his dealings with them. Acts 15, Gal. 2 colon 7 9, Rom. 11 11, 12, 15, 17, 25, 26. 2. It was a mystery that God would save another group of people from all. Nations that believe Christ died for our sins, in mystery, was buried, and rose again, 1 Cor. 15 colon 1 4. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13. 3. Our formation was the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden. Wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, 1 Cor. 2 colon 7, this group, the one new man, F. 2.15, is made up of both believing Jews and Gentiles, Gal. 3.28, the middle wall of partition has been broken down, so the Jews are not God's preferred people at this time, there is no difference, Rom. 3.22, 10.12. 4, the realm the body of Christ is destined for is the heavenly places for all. Eternity, F. 2 colon 6, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1, Colossians 3 verses 1 to 4, not the earth. 5. Paul does not want us to be ignorant of this mystery. That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come and of the duration of the nation of Israel's partial blindness is until the rapture. Rom. 11.25.6.
Behold, I shew you a mystery we shall not all sleep, die, but we shall all be changed, one core. 1551. Some will be alive at the rapture. The rapture and the subsequent judgment seat of Christ are exclusively found in Paul's letters. The previously unknown meeting when the church will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, one thus. For colon 13-18 is followed by Christ evaluating us for service, a job. Because he rose from dead in a new glorified body, we will also be changed and given immortal bodies at the rapture, one core. For colon 5, 15 colon 51-54, philosophy. 3 20, 21. 7. The mystery of godliness, 1 Tim. 3 16, is that Christ lives in us and is being manifested to the world through us until the rapture. We grow in godlikeness as we understand more of his word rightly divided. His spirit in us enlightens us, f. 118, the mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, Colossians 1 verse 27. 8. The mystery of Christ, Colonel 116, for colon 3, is that God had a twofold purpose. To redeem believers in both heaven and on earth by one cross, F. 1 colon 9, 10. 9. God gave progressive revelation. Paul was given the final hidden mystery. Revelation to fulfill, complete, the word of God, Colossians 1 verses 25 and 26, for the saints. 10. The result of the Godhead's plan, Ephesians 1 verse 4. His hearts might be comforted. Being, knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of mystery of God, and the Father, and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, Colossians 2 verses 2 and 3. 11. The mystery of his will in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things, in heaven and earth, in Christ, f. 1 colon 9. 10. 12. The mystery of iniquity that began with Satan is at work in the world but is hindered from fulfillment while the body of Christ is still being formed during the dispensation of grace until after our rapture, 2 Thess. 2 colon 7. 13. We are to hold on to the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience, 1 Tim. 3 colon 9, philosophy 317. The faith is the body of doctrine written to us in Paul's letters, described as the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, Rom. 1625. 14. Paul said that if we consider what I say, the mystery, and the Lord give. The understanding in all things, 2 Timothy 2 verse 7. The all things is the rest of the Bible or prophecy, the scriptures of the prophets, Romans 16 verse 25. 26. 15. The great mystery, Ephesians 5 verses 30 to 32, is our union to Christ, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17. We grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Ephesians 4 verse 14. The body members are joined to him in fellowship, transformed, and have been made joint heirs with him. Rom 8 17, 29, 12 colon 1, 2, Gal 2 20, 4 19, 1 Tim 3 15, 16. John 3 16 and Gentile salvation. A Pharisee named Nicodemus came to Jesus at night to ask him questions privately. John 3 verse 3 Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. For Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God.
Unless a man is born of the water of the womb and spiritually, he cannot enter the kingdom on earth. Six, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Seven, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Be not surprised that I say to you, Israel must be born again spiritually, individually now and nationally under the new covenant, Isaac. 36 colon 24 28 8 the wind bloweth where it listeth and thou hearest the sound thereof but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth so is every one that is born of the spirit those who are born spiritually will be resurrected in the kingdom Isaac. 37 colon 11 14 jesus continued to teach him what he should already know and revealed his omnipresent deity 313 And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. 14 And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. 15 That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The fiery serpent on the pole was a type of Christ on the cross bearing the sin and taking the judgment everyone in the world deserved. Number. 21 colon 5-9 16 for God so loved the world, Jews and Gentiles in prophecy, that he gave his only begotten son, his son promised to come from the seed of the woman, Genesis 3 verse 15, ISA. 7 14, 9 colon 6, 7 The son knew that he would be begotten from the dead, PSA. 2 colon 7, 16 10, John 2 verse 19, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Gospel of John was written so those in prophecy may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name, John 20 verse 31. But, not until Paul, did Christ reveal that he also died for the sins of the Gentiles in mystery, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4, 2 Cor. 521. Compare this gospel with Paul's gospel. For I, Paul, delivered, relayed the information, unto you first of all that which I also received, by revelation from the Lord Jesus Christ, Gal. 111, 12, how that Christ, the Son of God, 1 Cor. 1 colon 9, Rom. 1 colon 3, 4, Gal. 220, died for our sins, he was crucified for the sins of the Gentiles in mystery, including the individual Jews who are considered as Gentiles today. God is not dealing with nations in this dispensation but is building the body of Christ with one saved person at a time, according to the scriptures, and that he, Christ, was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, he rose as he said. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4 the Jews did not know that Christ would come as their Redeemer to shed his blood for their sins, ISA. 53 colon 8, Matt. 121, 1 Peter 1 verses 18 to 21, Heb. 922. However, the gospel of the kingdom is not bloodless, because Christ is many things, not just one, he is the Redeemer, the Son of God, and the valiant king of the Jews. Israel as a nation did not recognize their Messiah and crucified the Son of God, John 1 verse 11. But a remnant believed. The word world is speaking of Jews and Gentiles in prophecy. Gentiles in prophecy are saved by believing in the redemptive work of Israel's Messiah and demonstrate their faith by blessing and serving the people of Israel. Thus, saith the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles, and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers, they shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Isaiah 49 verses 22 and 23 in the dispensation of grace, Gentiles are saved by believing directly on what Christ has done and are not required to bless Israel. But we know that God wants all to be saved. Israel today is an apostasy which means deliberate and willful rejection of the truth. 
Not until Paul do we learn that Christ died for our sins, the Gentiles and the dispensation of grace. Paul preached Jesus as the Son of God, Acts 9 verse 20, and that he was declared to be the Son of God. He uses this phrase four times, Rom. 1 colon 4, 2 cor. 1 19, Gal. 2 20, F. 4 13. Christ came from the Hebrew line of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the twelve tribes, and then through David. Paul was a Hebrew that was born out of due time, 1 Cor. 15 colon 8. He had a premature birth out of his mother, Israel. Christ appeared to him and gave him a special office and mission to be the master builder of a special group of people the body of Christ, who are destined to live in heaven. Today Gentile believers get into the body of Christ by believing the gospel of the grace of God, Acts 20 verse 24. All believers are saved by trusting in the Son of God's death, burial, and resurrection for the sins, 1 Cor. 15 colon 1 4, 2 Thess. 2 14, apart from going through Israel, and apart from the law, Rom. 1 16, 3 colon 22 28. Christ is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, the distinction God made between his people Israel and all other nations by circumcision, his laws, and his presence. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain, individual Jews and Gentiles, one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you, which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father, F. 2 colon 14 18. After our rapture, God will resume his dealings with Israel and again make them a preferred nation and the middle wall of partition will be back up. Israel will go through Jacob's trouble. Ja. 30 colon 7. The tribulation. In the tribulation, they will confess the sins of the whole nation for not recognizing him as the Son of God the first time he came, for the nation's spiritual adultery, and say that God is just for punishing them since they did not do their part of the law covenant. God will send his fury and punish the nation in the tribulation, as he said he would in Leviticus. 26 colon 27 39, but then they will confess their sins, Leviticus. 26 colon 40 46. And he will forgive them at his second coming, when they look upon him whom they pierced, Zach. 12 10. Then all who see him, one third of the Jews, Zach. 13 colon 8. Will believe and the nation will be born in one day, Zach. 3 colon 9. ISA. 66 colon 8. Gentiles who believe in Israel's Messiah in the tribulation and in the kingdom will show their faith by serving the Hebrews. Jews who believe Paul's gospel in this dispensation become members of the body of Christ. It is important to notice not only what is said, but also what is not said in the Bible. Peter never calls his group the body of Christ. Paul never calls us the bride of Christ or a royal priesthood, we are ambassadors. The important thing to recognize is that no one can come before the Holy Father without the righteousness of his Son. When we believe the Gospel, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4, then Christ's righteousness, his Spirit, his life, is imputed to us and we can then come before the Holy Father. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 Chapter 5 Wrong Living, Immorality Rebuked 5 colon 1 13 Judging a member living in open sin, fornication What is the theme of 1 Corinthians? It is sanctification, the walk, life, or conduct of the saint. The Corinthians were saved, positional sanctification, but did not understand how they should now live, practical sanctification. The entire letter involves how believers should think, live, and labor for God.
Even when Paul explains the resurrection, he ties it together with our conduct. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1558. Sin originates in our minds. The counsel of the heart, for colon 5, are our thoughts and intents which God will judge. What should they be? To glorify and exalt our Lord Jesus Christ and to edify the body of Christ. We need to kill wrong thinking, which leads to wrong living at the root so that we can be useful laborers to God. Asterisk please note church with a capital C refers to the body of Christ, while church with a lowercase c is the local assembly. In chapter 1, Paul puts these carnal believers' eyes back on Christ and confronted them about the division in the church. Then in chapter 2, Paul told them that the cross of Christ included a mystery, God's hidden wisdom. Then in chapter 3, Paul says that he and Apollos are both ministers, but that Paul is the master builder on the foundation of Christ's ministry from heaven, and that laborers with God will receive rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. In chapter 4, Paul says in so many words that they have not esteemed their spiritual father, apostle, and God's steward of the mysteries highly. Paul cared enough to correct the Corinthians rather than allow them to continue doing wrong, following others instead of him. In chapter 5, Paul gives an example of blatant wrong living. After we have studied this chapter, we will examine the believer's two natures, the sin nature and the divine nature, which are at war within each of us until we are out of our bodies. Because the root problem of the fornicator was that he was feeding the wrong nature. Sin starts on the inside before it is revealed on the outside by the actions of the physical body. Having dealt with the division in the church, Paul deals with gross immorality in the church and the leader's refusal to deal with the offender. Paul gives two reasons why the offender should not be tolerated, for his own good, 5 colon 1 dash 5, and for the good of the church, 5 colon 6 dash 8. Believers in the church should judge other believers' actions, so put the wicked person out of the church, 5 colon 9 dash 13. The reputation of the entire assembly was in danger. 5 colon 1 It was common knowledge that a man should have his father's wife to Paul by those of Chloe's household and probably confirmed by the three who brought the letter of church questions to Paul, 1617. This sin was even shocking among the Gentiles. To allow a church member to live in open sin hurts them as well as the reputation of the church. A man had relations with his father's wife. The woman involved, his stepmother, was not a member of the church or Paul would have dealt with her as well. Not only is this type of incest against what God says, Leviticus 18 8, but it is covetousness, wanting what someone else has, and extortion, taking something that belongs to someone else. Sexual relations are not to be between a man and a woman, but between a husband and his wife. The marriage bed is undefiled, Heb. 13 colon 4, James describes how wrong thinking produces sinful actions. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. James 1 verses 14 and 15. The lust is of the flesh, eyes, and pride of life. 1 John 2 verse 16. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, physical body, sensual, soul, devilish, spirit. James 3 verse 15. Before we were saved, who was our father? Satan was. At salvation God rescued us. From that darkness, Colossians 1 verse 13, f. 2 colon 1 dash 3, and not only saved those who trust Christ, but sealed them with the Holy Ghost, f. 1 13, 14. God changes our thinking so we can live right and serve Him. Paul is a wonderful example of a man with a regenerated spirit, Titus 3 verse 5. 
He went from an angry, exceedingly mad man who hauled away men and women to prison, to wanting to save the jailer who put his lashed body in stocks in the inner prison, Acts 8 colon 1, 16 colon 23 dash 31, 26 colon 9 dash 11. The fornicator's sin was a total disgrace even among the Gentiles. Can you remember someone in prophecy that also did that? Jacob's firstborn son Reuben did so. Therefore, he did not receive the birthright of a double portion. Joseph, the firstborn of Rachel, received that blessing so that both his sons Manasseh and Ephraim received an inheritance portion in the land of Israel, Genesis 49 verses 3 and 4. 5 colon 2 dash 4 church members were puffed up glorying because they thought they were so open-minded tolerating the fornicator. They should have been mourning that this person may not be saved if he was committing such gross immoral sin, or they may need to excommunicate this person out of their assembly so that he would not affect other church members. Paul had already judged the situation. The same spirit that was in Paul was in them, the spirit of Jesus Christ. This man was making bad choices, lust and pleasure for a moment, not realizing what he should do because of all that Christ had done for him. 5 colon 5 Notice how Paul does not say soul but spirit, because this man's problem is wrong thinking, just like the Corinthians. Deliver him to Satan means to cut him off from church fellowship so he must live in the world. Let him go from the assembly so he can destroy his flesh with the pleasures of this world so that he realizes his need for the Savior and fellowship. Leave him to his own devices so that he can self-destruct or trust God. The world is controlled by Satan, 2 Cor, 4 colon 4, Gal, 1 colon 4, and is vain, empty. Sensual sin and perversion will bite in the end just like intoxication drink, PROV. 23 colon 13 dash 15, 26 to 35. The purpose of such discipline is not to lose a member, but rather first to make sure they are saved, will be raptured. But if he is saved, to bring him to repentance that he might be saved from the loss of reward on the day of judgment. Wandering saints need to be warned for their own good. Paul says in his letters that several types of believers should not be in the church. Members who have a reputation for flagrant sin, 1 Cor. 5 9 11, those who cause division, Titus 3 verses 10 and 11, those who perpetuate false doctrine with error, Rom. 16 17, 1 Tim. 1 20, and those who refuse to work, 2 Thess. 3 6 12. Paul kept his own vessel in control, 9 27. 5 colon 6 8 Paul begins the bread analogy. Paul said purge out old leaven, the fornicator, so the church can be a new unleavened lump of dough. In prophecy, leaven is a symbol of sin. Before the Passover, the Jews were to go through their homes and remove all leaven, Exodus 12 verses 14 to 20. Likewise, the church should clean house and remove the leaven, the fornicator. Would you open your home to anyone? Do you not realize that one member living in open sin can defile the entire church? For Christ is the unleavened bread, without sin, our Passover sacrifice. Therefore, we can celebrate what the Lord has done for the church every day. Colossians 2 verse 16 Do not purge the offender out because of hatred, but because you care for this man. If he is a true child of God, he will be convicted by his conscience and not be able to continue to sin in the world. The reputation of the entire assembly was in danger. 5 9 11 Paul now clarifies a letter that he had written before. I used to believe it was a letter that was not scripture, but it could be the Thessalonian letters to the Gentiles, 1 Thess, 4 3, 2 Thess. 3 colon 6. Paul said, And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man, and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. 2 Thess. 3 14. Paul clarifies his instructions saying they are not to associate with a person who calls themselves a believer and blatantly sins. If he calls himself a believer, he may or may not be a believer, only God knows the heart. However, we find out in 2 Cor, 
2 colon 6 8 that this man was a true believer and did repent and realized his error, but that the leadership of the church was reluctant to let him back into the church. We expect the unsaved to sin, but even the world expects Christians to be different. Church members should not be like the world. One reason the church has so little influence in the world today is that the world has too much influence in many local churches. We are not to even eat with church members who have ruined their testimony by open sin and have never made things right with the church and the Lord. If the church tolerates the sin, they are condoning the sin. 5.12, 13 Paul says that he is concerned with the body of Christ, not unbelievers, and that believers should judge the actions of believers. It shocks some believers when they hear that they are supposed to judge others. We are not to judge those without Christ, God will do that. But we are to expel those who live in open sin and will not change their minds and decide to stop sinning and live unto God from the local assembly. Church discipline must not be done hastily, but all parties involved must be permitted to state their case. Sometimes weaker brethren will accuse a strong King James Bible believers and right divider because they are ignorant of these facts. On other occasions, it is Satan who tries to bring division among the believers. 2 Cor. 2.11, there must be prayer and the word of God must be consulted. Mature believers should lovingly seek to restore those who are overtaken by sin. Gal. 6 colon 1, only God can judge the thoughts and intents of the heart. 4 colon 5, but we are to judge other believers' actions. 2.15. Paul says that what that man did was wicked. Now Paul says straight out that the fornicator should be put out of the church. When we are in the flesh, we are useless as laborers for God. This is what Satan wants. Our enemy is very sneaky. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Romans 8 verse 6 when believers are carnally minded, they live and act like the lost. The carnal are in the flesh, the sin nature, and not useful sons of God. 5 colon 1 It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. It was common knowledge that a man should have his father's wife to Paul by those of Chloe's household and probably confirmed by the three who brought the letter of church questions to Paul, 1617. This sin was even shocking among the Gentiles. To allow a church member to live in open sin hurts them as well as the reputation of the church. A man had relations with his father's wife. The woman involved, his stepmother, was not a member of the church or Paul would have dealt with her as well. Not only is this type of incest against what God says, Leviticus 18 colon 8, but it is covetousness, wanting what someone else has, and extortion, taking something that belongs to someone else. Sexual relations are not to be between a man and a woman, but between a husband and his wife. The marriage bed is undefiled, Heb. 13 colon 4, James describes how wrong thinking produces sinful actions. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death, James 1 verses 14 and 15. The lust is of the flesh, eyes, and pride of life, 1 John 2 verse 16. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, physical body, sensual, soul, devilish, spirit, James 3 verse 15. Before we were saved, who was our father? Satan was. At salvation God rescued us from that darkness, Colossians 1 verse 13 f. 2 colon 1 dash 3, and not only saved those who trust Christ, but sealed them with the Holy Ghost, f. 1 13, 14. God changes our thinking so we can live right and serve Him. Paul is a wonderful example of a man with a regenerated spirit, Titus 3 verse 5.
He went from an angry, exceedingly mad man who hauled away men and women to prison to wanting to save the jailer who put his lashed body in stocks in the inner prison, Acts 8, 1, 16, 23 31, 26,9 9-11. The fornicator's sin was a total disgrace even among the Gentiles. Can you remember someone in prophecy that also did that? Jacob's firstborn son Reuben did so. Therefore, he did not receive the birthright of a double portion. Joseph, the firstborn of Rachel, received that blessing so that both his sons Manasseh and Ephraim received an inheritance portion in the land of Israel, Genesis 49 verses 3 and 4. Two and ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. Church members were puffed up glorying because they thought they were so open-minded tolerating the fornicator. They should have been mourning that this person may not be saved if he was committing such gross immoral sin or they may need to excommunicate this person out of their assembly because his conduct may affect other church members. Three for I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present, concerning him that hath so done this deed, for in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, in my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, the same spirit that was in Paul was in them, the spirit of Jesus Christ. Paul had already judged the situation. This man was making bad choices, lust and pleasure for a moment, not realizing what he should do because of all that Christ had done for him. 5. To deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Notice how Paul does not say soul but spirit, because this man's problem is wrong thinking, just like the Corinthians. Deliver him to Satan means to cut him off from church fellowship so he must live in the world. Let him go from the assembly so he can destroy his flesh with the pleasures of this world so that he realizes his need for the Savior and fellowship. Leave him to his own devices so that he can self-destruct or trust God. The world is controlled by Satan, too. Cor 4 colon 4, Galatians 1 verse 4, and is vain, empty. Sensual sin and perversion will bite in the end just like intoxication drink, PROV. 23,13-15, 26-35. The purpose of such discipline is not to lose a member, but rather first to make sure they are saved, will be raptured. But if he is saved, to bring him to repentance that he might be saved from the loss of reward on the day of judgment. Wandering saints need to be warned for their own good. Paul says in his letters that several types of believers should not be in the church. Members who have a reputation for flagrant sin, 1 Cor. 5 9 9-11, those who cause division, Titus 3 verses 10 and 11, those who perpetuate false doctrine with error, Rom. 16 17, 1 Tim. 1 20, and those who refuse to work, 2 Thess. 3 colon 6 12. Mature believers should lovingly seek to restore those who are suddenly overtaken by sin, Gal. 6 colon 1. Paul kept his own vessel in control, 9 27. Dot. 6 Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? 7 Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, eight therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Paul begins the bread analogy. Paul said purge out old leaven, the fornicator, so the church can be a new unleavened lump of dough. In prophecy, leaven is a symbol of sin. Before the Passover, the Jews were to go through their homes and remove all leaven, Exodus 12 verses 14 to 20. Likewise, the church should clean house and remove the leaven, the fornicator. Would you open your home to anyone? Do you not realize that one member living in open sin can defile the entire church? For Christ is the unleavened bread, without sin, our Passover sacrifice. Therefore, we can celebrate what the Lord has done for the church every day, Colossians 2 verse 16. 
Do not purge the offender out because of hatred, but because you care for this man. If he is a true child of God, he will be convicted by his conscience and not be able to continue to sin in the world. The reputation of the entire assembly was in danger. Nine I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, ten yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. Eleven But now I have written unto you not to keep company, if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one know not to eat. Paul now clarifies a letter that he had written before. I used to believe it was a letter that was not scripture, but it could be the Thessalonian letters to the Gentiles, 1 Thess, 4 colon 3, 2 Thess, 3 colon 6, Paul said, And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man, and have no company. With him, that he may be ashamed, 2 Thess, 3.14, Paul clarifies his instruction saying they are not to associate with a person who calls themselves a believer and blatantly sins. If he calls himself a believer, he may or may not be a believer, only God knows the heart. However, we find out in 2 Cor. 2 colon 6 8 that this man was a true believer and did repent and realized his error, but that the leadership of the church was reluctant to let him back into the church. We expect the unsaved to sin. But even the world expects Christians to be different. Church members should not be like the world. One reason the church has so little influence in the world. Today is that the world has too much influence in many local churches. We are not to even eat with church members who have ruined their testimony by open sin and have never made things right with the church and the Lord. If the church tolerates the sin, they are condoning the sin. 12. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? Paul says that he is concerned with the body of Christ, not unbelievers, and that believers should judge the actions of believers. It shocks some believers when they hear that they are supposed to judge others. 13. But them that are without God judgeth. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. We are not to judge those without Christ, God will do that. But we are to expel those who live in open sin and will not change their minds and decide to stop sinning and live unto God from the local assembly. Church discipline must not be done hastily, but all parties involved must be permitted to state their case. Sometimes weaker brethren will accuse a strong King James Bible believers and right divider because they are ignorant of these facts. On other occasions it is Satan who tries to bring division among the believers, 2 Cor. 2.11, there must be prayer and the word of God must be consulted. There must be sincere Christian love, Gal. 6 colon 1, only God can judge the thoughts and intents of the heart, 4 colon 5, but we are to judge other believers' actions, 2.15. Paul says that what that man did was wicked. Now Paul says straight out that the fornicator should be put out of the church. When we are in the flesh, we are useless as laborers for God. This is what Satan wants. Our enemy is very sneaky. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Rom. 8 colon 6 When believers are carnally minded they live and act like the lost. The carnal are in the flesh, the sin nature and not useful sons of God. For the body of Christ, the answer for how to live the Christian life is in our doctrine, Romans to Philemon. The key to overcoming sin is having the mind of Jesus Christ in us. We need to be led by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit teaches us the doctrine of God's grace so that Christ can live his life through us. The two natures in the believer. Believers are spirit, soul, and body, one thess. 523, when we are saved our spirit is made alive to God. God's spirit joins with our spirit. Then God seals us with his Holy Spirit. God circumcises us, cutting the connection between soul and the flesh.
This separation prevents the sin nature from having power over us, giving us a choice to sin or not. The sin nature can never be improved. The only solution for the sin nature is crucifixion. When we were saved, the sin nature was crucified with Christ and died. It lost its power. We have to reckon ourselves dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God. Rom 6.11 We are alive to God because we received Christ's divine nature. Unfortunately, the sin nature is still present in our body and will be until the rapture when we receive our immortal bodies. The unsaved are carnal, a carnal believer is living like the unsaved and are babes, not led by the spirit. Our spirit is in our minds, f. For 23, our souls, who we really are, is in our hearts, rom. 1010, then we have our physical bodies that carry both around and performs actions based on the inner man, f. 316, 2 core. 416, rom. 617, 18, carnal, flesh, versus spiritual. Man's wisdom, waste time, psychology, politics, talk radio, God's wisdom, redeem time, Bible Christ's heavenly ministry through Paul imitate Paul or pattern feed on God's word, Colossians 3 verse 10, listen to grace preachers and teachers study the Bible rightly divided Christ exalted. Philosophy read Romans to Philemon then the rest children of disobedience sons of God. Garbage in equals garbage out mind of Christ in equals mind of Christ out. There is a war inside the soul of the believer where the two natures reside, between sin nature, flesh, and the divine nature, spirit. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Galatians 5 verses 16 to 18 And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh. TV diet gurus video games. Self-exaltation. With the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another, gal. 5 colon 24 dash 26. The nature which governs the believer is the one the believer feeds the most. Believe God's word. Rightly dividing. When I was little, my father would sometimes give my brother and I a candy bar saying you split it and then let the other chose. This way I would meticulously divide the treat equally. In 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, we are commanded to rightly divide the word of truth. We are to make the divisions that God makes to divide prophecy from mystery. The Greek word for rightly dividing is orthotomio, which means straight cut, divide truth correctly. I am not correcting the KJV with the Greek. I am simply agreeing that the KJV is correct in the translation of this word. During the translation of God's secret into Spanish, I began to notice the superiority of the King James Bible over all Bibles, including Bibles in foreign languages. Let's compare 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 in various Bibles. Give diligence to present thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, handling aright the word of truth. German, Luther, 1945. Study diligently to introduce yourself to God approved, as a worker who has nothing to be ashamed of, who traces the word of truth well. Spanish, Reina Valera Gomez 2010. Although the German and the Spanish use the Greek Textus Receptus, they do not use the superior TR of the KJV based on Stephanus 1550 and the Beza 1598. That is why I encourage everyone who speaks English to use the superior King James Bible if they are able. It will be the best Bible to use even in ages to come after we are raptured. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. KJV Comparing Modern Bibles Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth.
Neve, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. NRSV. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. NASB. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. NKJV 1982. So, the NKJV and the KJV both say rightly dividing, but the NKJV leaves out study and says be diligent instead. The NKJV also mistranslates an important verse in right division ROM. 15 colon 8 saying Christ has become instead of Christ was a minister to the circumcision like the KJV. In fact, the NKJV departs from the KJV in over 100,000 instances and is not to be trusted it is a counterfeit Bible. All the Bible is truth, but the truth needs to be divided. Until we learn to divide the Bible between mystery and prophecy, we will not understand the Bible and it will be a closed book of seeming contradictions to us. Furthermore, our spiritual growth will be hindered. It is definitely possible to be saved without rightly dividing the word of truth, but it is absolutely impossible to grow spiritually without rightly dividing the word of truth. Chapter 6 Disputes in the Courts The Holy Ghost in U.S. 6 1 8 Christians are forbidden to go to law against each other before unbelievers. We are to judge this present world in this life, and we will judge angels. 6 9 Our bodies are holy because they are washed, sanctified, and justified. 6 12 18 Our bodies belong to the Lord. 6 19 20 Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. In chapter 6, Paul rebukes the Corinthians for trying to solve their differences in the courts of unbelievers. Each Greek city had its courts and councils where the people's disputes were settled. Like today, many people took every opportunity to sue someone. Immature, carnal, Christians who are not growing in their sanctification process often cannot get along with each other. They lack the spiritual discernment to settle and solve interpersonal problems. They want to file a complaint, blame others, and drag them into court. They want their rights. 6 1 Paul is saying do you not understand how hazardous and dangerous it is to ask unbelievers instead of believers to judge between you? 6 2 We are to judge all things pertaining to this life. 2 5 6 3 Paul asks, are you not able to judge the little disputes among yourselves? People today often use lawsuits as a get-rich scheme. I remember some lady sued McDonald's because she spilled her hot coffee. People like to blame others for their stupid decisions and not take responsibility for their own actions. Paul is not saying that there is anything wrong with the courts of law because government structure was instituted by God for our good, wrong. 13. But unsaved judges do not have the ability to decide spiritual matters. The church members in Corinth were ruining their testimony and disgracing the name of the Lord by going to public courts. 6 3 When Paul says to judge the world he means now in this life. The church is to judge the world and things that pertain to this life. Paul essentially says, can't you judge the small matters among yourself, even the fornicator? We are supposed to know what is going on in the world politics, laws, weather, etc. But we are not to get entangled by them. 2 Tim 2 colon 4 Our goal is to keep singled eyed on what God wants to accomplish and not to get caught up with those who are blind to the things of God. If we really want to know what is going on, it is more important to read the Bible than the newspaper. Paul probably prayed for Nero's salvation, and I prayed for Obama's. We are commanded to pray for our leaders, 1 Tim, 2 colon 1, 2, so let us be diligent to pray for wisdom and right action for President Trump. The Corinthians and us should practice being able to judge now because we will judge holy angels when we are in heaven. The word judge means to rule. This realization should make worldly disputes seem less important. 
6 colon 4 dash 6 if the church members have no courage to judge a matter because they are worried about their reputation then pick the least esteemed in the church to do it because anyone can do the job you are too afraid to make unpopular decisions being a parent like paul was their spiritual father is not a popularity contest what matters is the well-being of the church members shame on you says paul is there not one wise enough to be a mediator or arbitrator between brethren? If two parties cannot reach an agreement, then they can quietly bring the matter before a spiritually mature Christian in the church. This person should prayerfully, privately, and discreetly be able to judge the matter. You are suing each other in front of unbelievers. 6 colon 7 Their thinking is not right. Defraud means taking something that rightfully belongs to someone else without consent. It is better to let ourselves be defrauded than to go bring lawsuits before unbelievers in public courts. Forget the wrong things people do to you, let them go. Too many Christians get wrapped up and consumed trying to protect their rights and get a little money from other Christians which takes away from serving God. 6 colon 8 dash 10 do you not understand how wrong it is to defraud a brother in christ you are brethren you should show love to one another we are family gal 6 10 we should not insist on having our rights we should say you first and then the other should reply no i insist you first paul says do you not know that the unrighteous unbelievers will not inherit the kingdom of god so why do you bring your complaints to them? The kingdom of God is made up of two realms, heaven to be populated by the body of Christ and earth to be populated by the kingdom of heaven on earth believers. The city called the new Jerusalem is in heaven but will come down to earth. Do not be deceived. Who wants them to be deceived? That is right, that old serpent of old, Satan. Then Paul lists 11 awful sins beginning with fornication that the unbelievers do now and believers used to do, 6 colon 6 f, 5 colon 1 dash 10, gal, 5 colon 19 dash 22, 6 11 they used to be like these unbelievers but now they have the imputed righteousness of Christ, 2 cor, 5 21 and their position is perfect and complete in him, Colossians 2 verse 10, they have been declared just before God by the Spirit of our God, Gal. 2 16. 6 12 We are not under the law but under grace. We have liberty, freedom. Nothing is prohibited but Paul is not going to allow himself to be ruled by his appetites and be brought under control of unwise things. Paul is responsible. God believes in us. He shows us grace. God is confident that by treating us as adult sons and lovingly allowing us free will to decide that we will choose to serve him and do right. God knows that love is the best motivator. He loved us first, 1 John 4 verse 19. 613 lusts are like dainty morsels of meat, PROV. 23 colon 1 dash 8, God will destroy the meats and the unrighteous unbelievers. Our bodies belong to the Lord, and the Lord for the body. We should serve the Lord with our body now, Rom. 618, 12 colon 1, 2. We can be motivated by God's grace to do right. Grace teaches us to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, Titus 2 verse 12. 614 Paul puts their eyes on the main thing. What matters is that God has raised up the Lord and will raise us up by the same power. We have been promised eternal life. The Father has raised up Jesus Christ, Gal. 1 colon 1, 2 Cor. For 14, the Son has raised himself up, John 10 verse 17. The Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead and will also raise us up, Rom. 8 11. 615 Paul is still talking about the evils of fornication he began in chapter 5. Notice how he uses questions to make them think and his points easy to understand. We also detect his obvious outrage. 616, 17 in Genesis 2 verse 24 God says that we are one flesh when we have physical relations with others. 
but we are one spirit with the Lord being spiritually joined with him, F. 5 colon 25 dash 32. Paul occasionally uses the marriage analogy with us the body of Christ, but we are the one new man, F. 215, a he while Israel is the bride of Christ as she. Christ is our head, but Israel's royal bridegroom. 618, 19 fornication is a sin against the Lord who we belong to and against ourselves, therefore escape from it, avoid it. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost and we do not belong to ourselves. The entire Godhead is in us, F. 4 colon 6, Colossians 1 verse 27. We who are in Christ, he is a new creature, 2 Cor. 517, individually and corporately, Gal. 615. Israel is also born again individually by faith in what God says, 1 Peter 1 verse 23, and will be born again corporately at Christ's second coming, ISA. 66 colon 8. 620 Christ redeemed both groups of believers with his blood on the cross, Colossians 1 verse 14, 1 Peter 1 verses 18 and 19. Therefore, we should glorify God in our body and spirit which belong to him, Ackle. 12 colon 7, Luke 23 verse 46, Rom. 12 colon 1. 6 colon 1 Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust, and not before the saints? Paul is saying do you not understand how hazardous and dangerous it is to ask unbelievers instead of believers to judge between you? 2 Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? We are to judge all things pertaining to this life. 2 colon 5, 6 colon 3. Paul asks, are you not able to judge the little? Disputes among yourselves? People today often use lawsuits as a get-rich scheme. I remember some lady sued McDonald's because she spilled her hot coffee. People like to blame others for their stupid decisions and not take responsibility for their own actions. Paul is not saying that there is anything wrong with the courts of law because government structure was instituted by God for our good, wrong. 13. But unsaved judges do not have the ability to decide spiritual matters. The church members in Corinth were ruining their testimony and disgracing the name of the Lord by going to public courts. 3. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? When Paul says to judge the world, he means in this life. The church is to judge the world and things that pertain to this life. Paul essentially says, can't you judge the small matters among yourself, even the fornicator? We are supposed to know what is going on in the world politics, laws, weather, etc. But we are not to get entangled by them. 2 Tim 2 colon 4 Our goal is to keep singled eyed on what God wants to accomplish and not to get caught up with those who are blind to the things of God. If we really want to know what is going on, it is more important to read the Bible than the newspaper. Paul probably prayed for Nero's salvation, and I prayed for Obama's. We are commanded to pray for our leaders, 1 Tim. 2 colon 1, 2, so let us be diligent to pray for wisdom, discernment, and right action for President Trump. The Corinthians and us should practice being able to judge now because we will judge holy angels when we are in heaven. The word judge means to rule. This realization should make worldly disputes seem less important. For if then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. If the church members have no courage to judge a matter because they are worried about their reputation, then pick the least esteemed in the church to do it, because anyone can do the job. You are too afraid to make unpopular decisions. Being a parent, like Paul was their spiritual father, is not a popularity contest. What matters is the well-being of the church members. 5. I speak to your shame. Is it so? that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren? Shame on you, says, Paul. Is there not one wise enough to be a mediator or arbitrator between brethren? 
If two parties cannot reach an agreement, then they can quietly bring the matter before a spiritually mature Christian in the church. This person should prayerfully, privately, and discreetly be able to judge the matter. 6. But brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. You are suing each other in front of unbelievers. 7. Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Their thinking is not right. Defraud means taking something that rightfully belongs to someone else without consent. It is better to let ourselves be defrauded than to go bring lawsuits in public courts before unbelievers. Forget the wrong things people do to you, let them go. Too many Christians get wrapped up and consumed trying to protect their rights and get a little money from other Christians which takes away from serving God. 8. Nay, ye do wrong, and defraud, and that your brethren. Do you not understand how wrong it is to defraud a brother in Christ? You are brethren, so love one another. We should not insist on having our rights. We should say you first and then the other should reply, No, I insist you first. Show love to one another, we are family, gal. 6.10 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, ten nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Paul says, Do you not know that the unrighteous, unbelievers, will not inherit the kingdom of God? So why do you bring your complaints to them? The kingdom of God is made up of two realms, heaven, to be populated by the body of Christ, and earth, to be populated by the kingdom of heaven on earth believers. Who wants them to be deceived? That is right, the old serpent of old, Satan. Then Paul lists eleven awful sins beginning with fornication that the unrighteous unbelievers are now, and believers used to be, 6 colon 6 f, 5 colon 1 dash 10, gal, 5 colon 19 dash 22. Eleven and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, and by the Spirit of our God. They used to be like these unbelievers, but now they have the imputed righteousness of Christ. 2 Cor. 521, and their position is perfect and complete in him. Colossians 2 verse 10, they have been declared just before God by the Spirit of our God. Gal. 2 16. 12 All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. We are not under the law, but under grace. We have liberty, freedom. Nothing is prohibited, but Paul is not going to allow himself to be ruled by his appetites and be brought under control of unwise things. Paul is responsible. God believes in us. He shows us grace. God is confident that by treating us as adult sons and lovingly allowing us free will to decide that we will choose to serve him and do right. God knows that love is the best motivator. He loved us first, 1 John 4 verse 19. 13 meats for the belly, and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Lusts are like dainty morsels of meat, PROV. 23 colon 1 dash 8, God will destroy the meats and the unrighteous unbelievers. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Our bodies belong to the Lord, and the Lord for the body. We should serve the Lord with our body now. Rom. 618, 12 colon 1. We can be motivated by God's grace to do right. Grace teaches us to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Titus 2 verse 12. 14 And God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Paul puts their eyes on the main thing. What matters is that God has raised up the Lord and will raise us up by the same power. We have been promised eternal life. The Father raised up Jesus Christ. Gal. 1 colon 1, 2 core. 
For 14, the Son raised himself up, John 10 verse 17. The Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead and will also raise us up, Rom 8 11. 15 Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. Paul is still talking about the evils of fornication he began in chapter 5. Notice how he uses questions to make them think and his points easy to understand. We also detect his obvious outrage. 16 What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. In Genesis 2 verse 24 God says that we are one flesh when we have physical relations with others. People look for love in all the wrong places when God has already loved us, Rom. 5 8, 832. 17 But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. But we are one spirit with the Lord being spiritually joined with him, F. 5 25 32. Paul occasionally uses the marriage analogy with us the body of Christ, but we are the one new man, F. 215, a he while Israel is the bride of Christ is she. Christ is our head, but Israel's royal bridegroom. 18. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Fornication is a sin against the Lord who we belong to and against ourselves, therefore escape from it, avoid it. 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost, and we do not belong to ourselves. The entire Godhead is in us, F. 4 colon 6, Colossians 1 verse 27. We who are in Christ, he is a new creature, 2 Cor. 5 17, individually and corporately, Gal. 615, Israel is also born again individually by faith in what God says, 1 Peter 1 verse 23, and will be born again corporately at Christ's second coming, ISA. 66 colon 8. 20 for ye are bought with a price, therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Christ redeemed both groups of believers with his blood on the cross, Colossians 1 verse 14, 1 Peter 1 verses 18 and 19. Therefore, we should glorify God in our body and spirit which belong to him, Ackle. 12 colon 7, Luke 23 verse 46, Rom. 12 colon 1. Know ye not that ye shall judge angels? 1 Corinthians 6 verse 3. We are going to judge angels in heaven. When Paul says, Know ye not that ye shall judge angels? 1 Cor. 6 colon 3, he means that in heaven in the ages to come we will rule or have authority over the holy angels. God will judge the fallen angels that sinned. Because Paul says, them that are without God judges, 513. Those without faith in what God says. Just like the twelve shall sit upon twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel in the kingdom. The word judge means rule. We will rule or have authority over angels in the heavenly places. The angels are watching and learning from us right now. F. 3 colon 9, 10, 1 Tim. 3 16, so we should behave ourselves soberly, circumspectly and respectfully for our Lord's sake, their sake, and for the sake of one another. Holy angels will come back with Christ at his second coming, Matt. 25 colon 31, angels are a mortal ministering spirit. God will judge the angels that sinned. There are two classes of fallen angels mentioned in the Bible. One, the angels which obeyed Satan and fornicated with women before the flood. These angels kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Jude 6. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. 2 Peter 2 verse 4. 
Apparently, angels need light, but darkness is a chain to them. 2. The angels who are not bound but go about doing the will of Satan. These are called devils in the King James Bible. These live in the second heaven and the body of Christ will replace them. Everlasting torment in the lake of fire is prepared for Satan and his angels. Matt 25 colon 41 Matt 829 Luke 8 verse 31 Revelation 20 verse 10 Satan and his angels will be cast out of heaven to earth in the middle of the tribulation, Revelation 12 verses 7 to 12. Satan is not an angel. He is a cherub. Cherubs have four wings and four faces. Ezekiel 1 verses 5 and 6, 10, 10, 14, 28 colon 14, 2 Chronicles, 11, 15, Revelation 4 verse 7. Angels do not have wings. Acts 1 verse 10. Seraphim have six wings, ISA. 6 colon 2. The notion that Satan reigns in hell is not biblical. An angel is king over some demonic creatures who come out of the bottomless pit, not Satan. Revelation 9 verse 11. Satan had the power over death, but Christ defeated him on the cross. Heb 2 14. Devils can enter into man and animals. This embodiment is for the purpose of doing evil, Mark 5 verses 2 to 5, 11 to 13, Matt 12 43, 44. They inflict physical maladies, making people blind, dumb, produce seizures into one a crooked back, Matt 12 22, 17 colon 15 18, Luke 13 verse 16. All flesh was corrupt before the flood, Genesis 6 verse 12. Satan's policy of evil has changed over time. He tricked Eve in the garden. He persuaded Cain to follow his wicked ways and kill his faithful brother Abel. He caused a great rebellion in heaven persuading the angels to follow him and pollute the humankind by unholy union with the daughters of men that produced giants on the earth. God had to send a flood to wipe out both man and animals because all flesh had corrupted itself on the earth. Genesis 6 verse 12. Satan influenced men not to replenish the earth but to congregate after the flood and build the Tower of Babel to worship the creature more than the Creator. God confounded their language and they did spread out, but they took their idolatry with them. In the future, Babylon will again be mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Revelation 17 verse 5, because of the wicked man of sin, Antichrist, and all the ungodly idolatry and evil. Devils are often behind idols and idolatry, 1 Cor. 1020, Satan convinced the Israelites, the body of Moses, to worship the golden calf while he was on the mountain, Jude 9 because Satan knew Daniel's timeline Satan had gone ahead to Israel and his angels possessed many people when Christ began his ministry, Matt.4, 24, 8, 16, 28, 33, 9, 33, 12, 43, Mark 1, verses 23 and 24, 5, 3, 5, 9, 17, 20, Luke 6, 18, 939. They know that Jesus is the most high God and about his supreme authority, James 2 verse 19. Evil spirits are real, but mental disease, a disorder of the mind, is to be distinguished from demonic control, Matt. 4.24, 12.22. Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils may manifest itself in religiously abstaining from certain foods and departure from the faith, 1 Tim. 4 colon 1 3 today satan and his devils are in conflict with the believers f 6 12 all unbelievers are open to demon possession f 2 colon 2 exorcism for demon possession was practiced in the past acts 16 18 19 colon 13 18 Satan learned that God was working through Paul, not Peter. He concentrated on trying to destroy what Christ was doing in his heavenly ministry to the body of Christ through Paul. Unable to destroy our faith in the King James Bible, Satan wants to oppose and conceal Paul's distinctive ministry. 
Satan is creating corrupt Bibles which hide the truth of the Word of God rightly divided and the mystery information to the body of Christ. Satan attacks the message, the messenger, discredits the messenger, discourages the messenger, and tries to bring division between the body of Christ believers. Satan is happy when pastors teach that believers are spiritual Israel, mixing the things that belong to Israel with those things that belong to the church, mix law and grace, and add works such as water baptism, speaking in tongues, and other requirements as necessary for salvation. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14, 15a There is only one true church, the body of Christ, yet we have so many denominations because of doctrines of men. All these denominations are against our Apostle Paul and his teaching, and so are the non-denominational churches. So, find a Pauline King James only church, start one of your own, or listen to a grace teacher on YouTube slash Facebook. This is the end of part two.